Extreme heat or heat wave events are becoming more frequent and more severe across the country, with climate data showing this trend will likely continue for the foreseeable future. In 2022 alone, we saw record-breaking heat even in historically moderate climate zones. As an example, we were witness to Portland, Oregon hitting a staggering 116 degrees Fahrenheit with a full seven days in a row at 95 degrees or hotter. This one heat wave alone was responsible for multiple casualties across the state. In our journey of preparing for emergencies, it's vitally important that we get informed about extreme heat so that we can put together good emergency plans and kits and ultimately keep our families safe. Extreme heat is defined as summertime temperatures that are much hotter and or humid than average. Because some places are typically hotter than others, this depends on what's considered average for a particular location at that time of year. Humid and muggy conditions can make it seem hotter than it really is, and your sweat doesn't evaporate as well, so your body doesn't cool as efficiently. Now let's say you live in an area that already has high summertime temperatures. Let's say the highs average 100 degrees or hotter, like in the desert southwest, and the power goes out for an extended period. Even though technically this might not be considered an extreme heat event, the fact that there is no power and air conditioning makes it a heat emergency. First, we'll take a look at some medical emergencies that can affect us during extreme heat. Heat-related illnesses like heat exhaustion or heat stroke happen when the body is not able to properly cool itself. While the body normally cools itself by sweating, during extreme heat, this might not be enough. In these cases, a person's body temperature rises faster than it can cool itself down, and this can cause damage to the brain and other vital organs. According to the ready.gov website, when looking at weather-related casualties, extreme heat is responsible for a significant percentage of annual deaths. People with special support needs may be at an even higher risk than the general population because be less likely to sense and respond to changes in temperature. They may also be taking medications that can make the effect of extreme heat worse. Heat stroke, heat exhaustion, and heat cramps are just three of the heat-related illnesses that can affect us in a heat wave. Heat stroke is a serious condition where the signs might include extremely high body temperature above 103 degrees Fahrenheit if taken orally, red, hot, and dry skin with no sweat, rapid, strong pulse, dizziness, confusion, or unconsciousness. If you suspect heat stroke, call 911 or get the person to the hospital immediately. Cool down with whatever methods are available until medical help is available. Do not give the person anything to drink. Heat exhaustion may present as heavy sweating, paleness, muscle cramps, tiredness, weakness, fast or weak pulse, dizziness, headache, fainting, nausea, and vomiting. Heat cramps is a condition where the person may have muscle pains or spasms in the stomach, arms, or legs. If you have signs of either heat cramps or heat exhaustion, go to a cooler location, cool down by removing excess clothing and taking sips of sports drinks or water. Call your healthcare provider if symptoms get worse or last more than an hour. To get more information about these serious health conditions, we'll link to a CDC infographic which covers five related heat illnesses in more detail. Regardless where you live, there is a high probability that extreme heat events can lead to either rolling blackouts or even longer lasting power outages. How are you going to stay hydrated, cool, and safe when it's extremely hot outside and the power is out? Like all emergency weather events, it's important to know how to access local news, apps, weather, and broadcasts for information. Knowing when the heat will set in and how long it will last can help you prepare. You'll also want to learn about the Emergency Alert System, or EAS, and the NOAA Weather Radio, which is covered in a video entitled, Get Informed About Emergency Radios, as these can help alert you even if the power is out. One of the more important things that you and your family can do to stay safe in extreme heat is to ensure you stay hydrated. As we like to plan for the worst case scenarios, assume the power and water will be out. 
Do you have enough stored water to provide at least one gallon per person per day for three days? As an example, a four-person family will need a minimum of 12 gallons to cover three days, or 63 gallons to cover three weeks. You should limit drinking diuretics like sugary drinks and coffee as they tend to dehydrate the body. Instead, stick with water or other hydrating drinks containing electrolytes like some sports drinks. Staying as cool as possible is imperative, so consider the following. Identify the coolest area of your home. You should close off rooms with exterior walls and also stay as low as possible in the home since heat rises. With the choice of upstairs or downstairs, stay downstairs, and if you have a basement, that's even better. Do you have any battery-powered fans or other ways to move the air if the power is out? This, in addition to a spray bottle for providing a cooling mist, can help significantly. Wet washcloths and bandanas along with moving air can also be cooling. For your home's sun-facing windows, which are the south-facing if you're north of the equator, do you have either heat blocking curtains or the ability to cover the windows in foil or other reflective material? Use the nighttime to open windows and doors in an attempt to cool the house down. Do you have screens for your windows and doors? If the heat in your home becomes too intense, do you know where you can go to cool down? Many communities have cooling shelters. Locate where these shelters are and how to get to them. As long as there's power, you can also go to shopping malls, grocery stores, and other public buildings that have air conditioning. If you have someone in your home that has medication that requires cooling, how do you plan on keeping that medication cool if the power is out? Do you have ice on hand or any type of battery-powered refrigeration? Again, assuming the power is out, food will not keep long in the refrigerator. Do you have non-perishable foods to last you and your family for at least three days? As any indoor cooking adds substantial heat to the home environment, if you have to cook, do you have a way to do it outdoors like a barbecue grill? Let's review how to get informed about staying hydrated, cool, and safe during an extreme heat event. You'll want to access weather information and alerts from local sources like TV, radio, and the internet. You can also use your emergency radio and access the NOAA weather radio and alerts. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of hydrating fluids like water or sports drinks. Have emergency water stored in case the power goes out during this extreme heat event. Stay cool by staying low in the house. Blocking the direct sunlight that's coming through the windows. Closing off rooms with exterior walls. Using fans to move the air. Using water to mist. If you have running water, you can take a cool shower. Also, have a way to keep medications cool if necessary. If you have to be outside, limit your time and activity in the direct sunlight. Identify places to go to get cool. Cooling shelters, public buildings, shopping malls, and the like. Have your go kit ready in case you do need to leave your home. And learn the signs, symptoms, and actions to take if someone in your household experiences a heat-related illness. This concludes the video on getting informed about extreme heat. It's time to take action on your emergency preparedness.